Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to trigger WordPress cron jobs for all sites within a WordPress multi-site network. I'm sure you know what WordPress cron is, but let me remind you real quick. Actually, by the way, before I continue, if you need to get to this article and the code that I share here, you need to go to orbisius.com slash 4400. It's going to lead you directly to this blog post. So WordPress cron is a nice feature. It allows WordPress to schedule some tasks to be run on a regular basis. For example, checking for WordPress updates and plugin updates and theme and so on. With WordPress cron job, it gets triggered when somebody visits a website. With WordPress multi-site, some sites may not get, get enough visitors. So that's why it's important to trigger those cron jobs from a central location and for all sites within that network. There's some requirements in this particular case. We're going to use WordPress CLI, so WordPress client uh, interface, command line interface, actually. Uh, FTP or SFTP or access to cPanel, things to learn and a nice beverage. The first step is to turn off the default WordPress cron so it doesn't get triggered and you need to do that by editing the WordPress config file and add this line just right after the starting PHP tag. The second step is to copy this script and paste it into the folder that has the WordPress config file. The way I name my files, is they start with zzz underscore cron for American folks, zzz underscore cron dot php. That way the file gets ordered at the very end. So for example, this is my hosting and you can see here zzz underscore cron it's at the end sometimes if i want to file to the file to appear at the top i would put some zeros in front of it now i don't have to search for that file name within the list especially if it's a long list again you need to copy this file and upload it or actually, for example you could right click new and then file and you can in the file like this and the program that you're using it's a the FTP program is gonna call a, a text editing program in my case it's a, it's PHP storm and yeah just pasted the code and it's going to be uploaded any second with PHP storm you don't need to save anything just get saved automatically that's a good thing when you're developing locally, but when you're editing files on the server, it's not a good idea because the file could be partially uploaded, but that's a totally material for a different story or a different video, rather. So, actually, this script checks for PHP at different locations and also for WordPress CLI. Most hosting companies, they do have it installed and the central location uses a local bin WP or might be cases where it's installed here and the very last option that I supply here is for you to download the file and upload it locally that's why that's what I had to do because there's some restrictions in my hosting so it can open files outside of the website's directory that's why I've downloaded the WP CLI from WP-CLI org website and I just scroll down, copy this link and hit enter and you can save the file and then upload it to, to your hosting. I use WinSCP to transfer files. It's very really nice. And the next step is to trigger that cron job. So the website the file name and question mark go that check is done at the beginning you can change it this thing to something else if you want to protect that file hit enter or return from my folks and it provides me some information and how many events have been executed 
call. And yeah, also shows the number of sites within the network. It's very useful information, starting and ending date. You can also call this thing using command line. It's going to still work. And the last step that we need to do is to trigger the script to be run automatically at a given moment. If you have cPanel, you can, after, actually, after you log in, you need to search for cron and then go to cron jobs and click on add, or don't have here, and you should see this screen. And you can pick, let's say, every five minutes. And for the command, you have two options. One is to use this. Actually, the command should be only this. I'll have to correct the article. This is the full command line that has to be inserted in, in the regular Chrome tasks. But here, we need to paste just this thing. It's one of the options. I prefer to use the other option because calling PHP this way is going to free us, it's going to allow the script to run with more resources. When it's when that script is triggered from the browser, there's limitations and, for example, PHP could be stopped at, let's say, at two minutes mark or something like that. It would have partially finished its job. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe. And in order to get to this article, you need to go to orbisius.com slash 4400 and I'm going to include the link in the description box. Bye and have an awesome day. See ya.